So I'm gonna create something that says hello world. And then I'm pasting in a little bit of inline assembly here. So what actually happens underneath the hood? This SVC, that means supervisor call. In order to call supervisor call, essentially there's some registers. So register uh, X16 is whenever you're making a supervisor call, that's what tells you what number you put in there tells you what function it's calling. So in this case, number four tells us that we're doing a standard out, right? Um, I think number 55 is like a reboot, one is a terminate, et cetera. Uh, X1, so in ARM64, uh, X0, X1, and X2 represent parameters. So uh, X0, uh, in this case, we're moving in at number one. Uh, parameter X1, uh, zero here is basically I'm passing in hello world. So that's the, the code that I'm gonna, gonna run there. And then number 13 is basically uh, the length of the text. So if I actually add in reg, um, uh, x dot uh, length, I could change this here and put one, and then that's gonna use whatever length of that string is there. So now if I do a Rust compile, you can see that is now compiled. I've got my hello.o, and then if I do my linking as I did before, and if I call hello, here you can see it comes back with hello world, and I could type in whatever I want here. So I could do a hello, I could put in a new line, let's run that, we'll do a Rust compile, We'll do the link again, call hello, and you can see hello world. So that's actually assembly code that's gonna do the job in ARM64. Now again, Rust is taking care of all of these calls underneath the hood, right? Because you know you, you have to have variations for Intel assembly, ARM64 assembly, and that's all dealing with that, and it's got to all handle so you didn't need, you should never ever write code with that. But underneath the hood, down in the depth, what's actually happening is you're gonna be getting code that actually does that. And you could put your own Intel code, check out my video on Rust assembly underneath the hood with an Intel assembly and you'll learn how to do that. I think the last thing that I'm gonna do is we're gonna turn this into a macro. So we will create a macro here. Uh, to do that, we will say macro underscore rules uh, and then we will, I think we're gonna call this uh, printf. So all I need to do now is just essentially put an expression in here. Uh, so it can accept in a value. If I didn't want to pass in a parameter, I could just use uh, an arrow type function there like this, but because I want my expression, I'm gonna be accepting a parameter f. So what I'm gonna do is copy and paste this, uh, this piece of unsafe code here. And now because the x length has been passed in as a parameter, I can now do a print f and we can put uh, my x through there. Finally, the last thing I need to do is rather than use an x, I just need to use dollar x, right? Now I'm just gonna save that, and I'm gonna uh, run my code, and we'll do our link, and now if we run dot hello, you can see it says hello world, and I can change anything I want within here. Um, I can say uh, hello, uh, a little bit more normal, and then we do the compile again, do the link, and do the hello world. And as I said, what's happening underneath the hood is making these supervisor calls here. And I could call anything that I want assembly-wise. I could call a reboot, I could call whatever, um, but now I've got my own macro. And if you think about what Rust is doing underneath the hood, it's taking care of all of that. And then it's not just uh, things like the uh, the printf call, it, it's anything that's a system call, whether it's a terminate, whether it's a reboot, that's all being handed underneath the hood for you. So the last thing, I mean, if we were looking at the ARM64, I talked about the system calls there for a second. This just gives you an idea, right? So system call one is exit. So if I were to, and it takes in a return value, remember what I said about if we come back to the C function where it's got the int and then the return zero, um, what do you think is actually happening there? It's calling an exit, right? Again, Rust has taken away that complexity. There is our, uh, the right, there's our, uh, our printf, yeah, so that's our standard out, uh, you know, or printf in, in, uh, in C language. Read, that's your input, right? So when you pull an input in, that's a system call as well there, right? Things like change directory, chones uh, is all in there as well. Killing processes, uh, number 55, you can call a reboot. Don't worry, you need to be a uh, super user before you can do that. Um, and again, all you would need to do is in your code, 
is change that value here, pass in the right parameters, x0, x1, x2 represent your parameters. Um, all you would need to do is pass in your parameters and uh, make the right uh, call here, and then you'll be able to call those system functions. But again, Ross is taking care of that underneath the hood for you. Even in C, that's a part of the standard.h, right? So that's your standard lib functionality uh, that's coming with underneath the hood. So, you know, again, just for this simple fn, what, what's actually happening? You've got the build, you've got the link, you've got the macro for the printf, which makes system calls, and then you've got the terminate and the return and return value. So even though um, this is a super, super simple function, there's a lot going on there in Hello World. Anyway, I hope this has been useful. I hope you have a better understanding of what happens with Russ underneath the hood with Hello World. Uh, and uh, we'll speak soon in the next video.